Hello everybody, it's John Schneider, and it's old movie night, so get out your popcorn and imagine it's the year 1930. And here's New York City, site of the stock market crash which led to the Great Depression. And as someone said somewhere, it was the best of times, it was the worst of times. And during the summer in the Big Apple, it got hot, and some people wanted to escape which they did in droves to places like Coney Island. If they had a car, they'd drive, or they took a bus or a train to get there. But some folks took a steamship ride from Battery Park in New York City, went across Raritan Bay, and came to visit our part of the world, the Jersey Bayshore. Welcome to Jersey Bayshore country, and this episode called Steamships, Boardwalks, and Times Gone By. And we're going to generally focus on the year 1930, when America's population was about 123 million. And most people lived to be about age 60. You could get a dozen eggs for 44 cents, and milk was 14 cents a quart. At the beginning of the 1930s, more than 15 million Americans, fully one quarter of all wage-earning workers, were unfortunately unemployed. President Herbert Hoover didn't do much to alleviate the crisis. Patience and self-reliance, he argued, were all Americans needed to get them through this passing incident in our national lives, he said. So getting away from the heat and strife people suffered in the area was important, and entertainment, especially cheap entertainment, was sought after. These were the days when big bands and swing music were very popular, like Duke Ellington, Benny Goodman, and Glenn Miller. The 30s were difficult, but people still found ways to have fun. And one way was heading to the Jersey Shore. And that's what this episode is all about. The Jersey Bay Shore was, was a major getaway. From Seabright to Highland Beach to Highlands and Atlantic Highlands to Keensburg, Keyport, and Cliffwood Beach. This was an area that would host the golden age of tourism when folks would crowd into a steamship and sail across the Raritan Bay to one of many ports of pleasure. And right in the middle, between Highland Beach and Cliffwood Beach, stood the town of Keensburg, which came to symbolize the great getaway for thousands of tourists every summer. Now, there were a number of very far-sighted entrepreneurs in the day who saw our part of the world as a great place to work, to live, and to play. And one of them was William Alvin Gilhouse who founded the Keensburg Ferry Service Company in 1910 to lure New Yorkers who were interested in buying homes or vacationing in Keensburg. And Dan Dorn and his son were extremely enthused about the vision of William Gelhouse, and so they both decided to produce a promotional film to lure New Yorkers to this great place to live and to work and to play, as I said before. But this was the city of Keensburg, which was the company's pride and joy at 231 feet, 
Local resident and historian Douglas Folks worked on the boat when he was young. My father was a tugboat captain for the Standard Oil Company when they had all their tugs. And suddenly, uh, Standard Oil sold and got rid of all their tugs. And uh, my father went with the Kingsburg Steamboat Company, which was renting uh, old excursion boats for cargo in the winter and for uh, passengers to the shore in the summer. Uh, so that was, and I spent time with my dad uh, on the boats. Uh, I actually worked on the boat, but I had a stateroom. I didn't have to sleep them down in the buildings like, you know, the other deckhands and so forth. So it was uh, quite a job. So thousands of tourists would board a number of steamships departing from New York City to head for one of many resorts at the Jersey Bay Shore. Kingsburg was very popular among all of them. And remember, this is 1930, almost 90 years ago. And look how well everybody's dressed. And <laughs> check out those straw hats. People don't wear hats much anymore, do they? But fashion was big back then, even at the beach. And here's the dock in New York from which we're going to depart shortly. And incidentally, there were postcards of every description back in those days. Postcards cost about a penny. Not so many postcards today, and they would certainly be more than a penny, I'm telling you. We got a few more passengers to get aboard, and then we're going to be ready to shove off. Now there's the steam whistle, so here we go. Although we're cheating a bit with a film of a different steamship, there were many different steamships. Ah, here's the captain and his officers. Wait a minute, who's steering the ship? It's an old joke. And here we are in the middle of Raritan Bay, headed toward our destination with a shipload of excited passengers. Can you see the Jersey Bay Shore in the distance? Well, we're almost there. Agony, agony, this suspense is killing me. Incidentally, very often there would be a band playing music on the boat as it headed toward its destination, and folks would dance. But now everyone is headed to the outside by the railing to see the Jersey Bay Shore as it gets closer. And there it is, Keensburg, 1930. Oh, by the way, this was not shot with a drone. Okay, finally, here comes the city of Keensburg to the city of Keensburg. <laughs> Can you see everybody by the railing? Oh, they're excited, all right. So let's join them, shall we, and take a look from their point of view. And there it is. Hooray! Wow! Check out that long pier extending out into Raritan Bay to greet us. And here's 
here's a picture for your scrapbook. And after we disembark, we can either walk down the pier or take a miniature train ride. Here's a couple of postcards of the train we can send to our relatives in Chicago or Philadelphia. And as soon as everyone gets off the boat, the train will take us on our way. Look, that's us, that happy couple running to catch the train. We had so much energy back then, didn't we? <laughs> Here we go. A lot of people love to go fishing on this pier as well. In fact, they, they still do today. Look, you can still see our ship way out there at the end of the pier, see it? And here comes our train. So let's get off and begin our adventure. Ah, uh, the jackrabbit. Only 15 cents to ride. It's actually a roller coaster. And remember that frame or structure upon which we're riding is made out of wood. That's enough to scare me. Oh no, hold on! Here we go! <laughs> Good thing we didn't have lunch first. That guy in front of the first car, do you see him? Let's freeze the frame here for a minute. Let's give credit where credit is due. He is our filmmaker, Mr. Dorn. And we have him and his father to thank for these great images. How about bumper cars? I worked on a boardwalk for a dollar a day, and uh, I worked in uh, smocks. I, I was going to be a soda jerk. At least he told me that. And uh, I said, well, that's great. That's what I want to do. I want to be a soda jerk for some reason. So and that, I, I got the job, but I wasn't a soda jerk. I was a dishwasher. It, and I... He had what they called the Blue Plate Special for 35 cents. And when the boats come in, these Blue Plates, I don't know whether you ever, you had to see them somewhere in your life, the sectional, like a TV dinner. But they were blue and they had Dutch scenes and so forth. Well, I had Blue Plates in a little room that was not even 12 by 12. It was about 8 by 6 or something. And 
the dishes were up to the ceiling getting ready for the next boat that comes in. So they have plates for their blue, blue plate special, you know. And he would, he would say, you got to hurry up. Gotta, I, we need plates. We need plates, you know. So I, I was the dishwasher for quite some time before I got a different job. I, uh, I worked for Lillian Gilhouse, was the daughter of Mr. Gilhouse. She took over all, all of the custard stands, frozen custard, malted milk stands, and uh, I ended up with the malted milk stand. Now besides the rides, restaurants, and the boardwalk, there was the famous crystal pool, with a kiddie pool and a waterfall. The boardwalk was always popular, but according to Doug Folks, something else was popular before the boardwalk was even built. Every, everyone thinks that the boardwalk was the first thing that existed down here. But the first thing really was the um, Camp John. It was a German athletic club out of Newark. And uh, they had a title of... Uh, some sort of German name, and they were very active in activities. And they owned all of that property on Carr Avenue, where the Dublin, the Dublin house is now, and down to uh, almost where Ballbacks was. And that's later on they built a big pavilion. Now this is all before the boardwalk, and uh, Eventually, the boardwalk moved in, and uh, that was the big attraction. And Camp John kind of faded out during the war. The boardwalk it was taken over and run down, and then it was brought back by the the young younger generation. And uh, I can see that the investments that they have made is altogether different than their their uh, family. So while we're focusing on the Keensburg boardwalk, there were boardwalks everywhere along the Jersey Shore. So it wasn't just Keensburg, you could go anywhere along the Jersey Shore and walk along a boardwalk. And folks just loved to stroll along on them. Obviously the kids and some adults as well love to ham it up for the camera. And if you're a people watcher, the boardwalk was the place to be. All right, let's get back to the rides like the Tilt-A-Whirl. And the Merry-Go-Round. This aeroplane ride was always fun for smaller children, but uh, let's go get something to eat and check out a boardwalk favorite, Pete and Mary's. Always great food at a great price. Actually, compared to today, everything was at a great price. <laughs> And now for dessert, let's go to Henny's Bakery and Pastry Shop, a favorite of everybody along the boardwalk. Can you smell it? Mmm, delicious. I'll take one of these, and two of these, and three of those. Now don't crowd everybody, there's plenty of uh, stuff for everybody here, and everything is freshly baked every single day. 
But now, let's check out the rest of Keensburg, shall we? And see, what, uh, see what's going on. Are there some car dealerships here? Yes, several. We had a Ford dealer on Car, on car Avenue. Ah, very nice. And not too expensive, except if you tried to buy one today. <laughs> yeah, right? Incidentally, back in these days, the gas pumps were usually located along the side of the road, so you could just pull up to the curb and fill up your tank. And uh, I was a great one. I, I had a fairly good voice, I guess. And I went all, into all the am, amateur hours were the big boom. And uh, they had them at the marathon. They had them at the dance hall, which was the crystal ballroom. Uh, they had them at the theater, uh, Briggy's Theater, we called it. And uh, I, I went into, I'd sing a couple of songs. Well, the big, the big thing was the change of being a resort town to an all-year-round town. And of course, I lived through that cycle, and it was still going on after the war. Uh, Things were starting to convert from bungalows to all year round houses. And uh, Marcy and Walker went into a big building program throughout uh, the Beacon Beach area and built some nice dwellings. There were summer cottages. And today they're all there and they're all year round houses. So this is the way the town changed. It, it changed very rapidly. Uh, and it was, it was a strain on a lot of our systems, the, the uh, water plants and so forth. But uh, we all loved the town, and I still do. I, otherwise, I wouldn't devote my time to the fire company and to the historical and whatever else I can participate in. And as you drive through Kingsburg today, so many of these bungalows and homes are still standing. Down on Carr Avenue, uh, Jerry Sheen and Benny Andridge uh, built a, a, a row of stores, and one was the Dublin House, and it was a little uh, a tavern. A tavern that had a band in it, and uh, that was our hangout. But until 8 o'clock or so, We'd be in the candy store having coffee, and then we went into the, into the Dublin house uh, for our beer. Or, you know, that's where you met everybody. That, that was our hangout, and we had a lot of fun then. Well, it, 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 you don't know everyone anymore. I think I knew everyone, you know, <laughs> and uh, or their child or whatever and everyone knew one another. Uh, and we all worked in the boardwalk, most of us, for the dollar a day. Uh, and it was, it was, a dollar a day was good. You know, uh, we had money to buy our clothes for the, for the winter and so forth. But many people came to Keensburg to enjoy the beaches with their families. Mm -hmm. 
and in the good old summertime, uh, it, it didn't feel much better on a hot day than to slip into Raritan Bay for a good soaking. And there were always plenty of lifeguards just in case you needed them. And as I said before, if you didn't have a camera, there were always postcards to purchase. There was nothing like a day in Keensburg at the beach to help you forget your troubles in a period filled with troubles. And again, just to remind you, this is 1930 and we had our share of troubles. So let's just take a few minutes to imagine ourselves looking through the lens of our own camera as we record what's happening. <laughs> Wait until our friends see this on our film projector when we get back home to New York City. Well, did you have a good time? Yeah, me too. Look, here we come out of the water. And then when the sun sets, we're not done with having fun. We can stroll under the moonlight on the boardwalk or maybe we'll dance to live music in the pavilion. I love this song, don't you? Again, I want to thank the Dorn family for some great footage from 1930, it's so invaluable. And thanks to Doug Folks for sharing his wonderful memories. And thanks too to the Gelhaus family as well, who have done so much for Keensburg over such a great many years. And thanks to the Historical Society of Keensburg who are trying to keep history alive. You should really visit the Keensburg Historical Museum to learn even more. And finally, thank you for watching. And I hope you'll join me next week for a brand new episode of Jersey Bay Shore Country and visit our website, jerseybayshorecountry.com to see all of our episodes. And remember, if you see me wandering about anywhere at all, no matter what I'm doing, please do stop me and introduce yourself because nothing is more important than meeting you. So long, folks.